Okay, let's see if you can apply what we learned in the Word Manual lesson about merging business letters. You're going to come to Correspondence 11295, click Start Work, and you need to have either the steps in your textbook on page 465 ready at hand, or your checklist as shown over here at the right. We need to complete the six steps indicated there. First, we're creating the main document without any placeholder fields, and we're going to be saving this as Correspondence 11295 Main, with hyphens inserted as indicated. No spaces, but hyphens. That means when we start the letter and you see in the textbook the placeholder field code, we will just be leaving space for that. Now, as you know, in a regular standard format for a business letter, you're going to press enter five times, one, two, three, four, five, type the date, the current year, then you're going to press enter four times, one, two, three, four. This is where the inside address would begin. We only need to leave one blank line for that, so press enter twice. This is where you will be inserting the greeting line, then press enter twice to begin the first paragraph of the letter. Now, if you want to remember this for the following projects, count the number of blank lines you see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You press enter eight times, there will actually be seven blank lines when you begin your paragraph. Now this is a rough draft, so note that when you start a new paragraph, you need to press enter two times. I'm pausing at the email address because some students have a difficult time reading the letters in the email address, or interpreting them, I should say. First you put C Brown at, now these letters are ltrca.com, and I just want to explain that a hint to figuring those out is to look at the name of the Community Association, Lakeshore Terrace Residential Community Association. That is the initial letter of each of those words is what the LTRCA part of the email address indicates. I also would like to point out that it is very unlikely that the email address would be .com and the website would be .org. There should be consistency between those two, but since GDP is going to score you on the basis of what you see here, go ahead and type what is in the original copy in your textbook. Now we're ready for the last paragraph. We press enter twice to type sincerely. Notice the pipe indicates where you break the lines, but it also we need to get our three blank lines before the writer's ID. Press enter two times and type your own reference initials first and last only. Do not press enter again after you type your reference initials. So give it a look over. Your main document should look like this and then we need to take a special step to save it in the way we're instructed as Correspondence 11295 Main. So I'm going to do that. Save as. Don't save in your temporary folder, but go to your protected folder where you save all of your 119 or GDP documents. Now, this is where we need to change what is automatically filled in here to Correspondence Main and save. The next step is to create a data source file. The steps are to go to the Mailings tab, select recipients, and type new list. Now we have the table on page 466 to fill in this information. Be careful to fill it in the appropriate fields in the dialog box here. Click New Entry. Be careful not to space after each field that you type in. That's a common mistake, but it will cause spacing errors when you merge your document.
OK, four entries, click OK. And we are instructed to save this as Correspondence 112.95 Data and save. Now we are back to our main file and we need to insert the appropriate placeholder fields in the form letter. Come down to the fourth line below the date. Then we're going to go to the Write and Insert Fields group and click Address Block and OK. Then come down to where you would type the salutation and insert greeting line. We're going to select on this screen the colon and OK. Note here is your preview. Now, if any adjustment is needed to the blank lines above or below, be sure to do that so that they will format the inside address and salutation correctly. At this point, you should preview your results. If you find any spaces that you inserted in the data source file, you can adjust those. Click through your records to check all four. You can turn off the preview so that we won't get our files confused here. Now, finish and merge and to edit individual documents. We want to merge all records, so click OK. And notice here we have four pages in this newly merged document currently named Letters 1. Scroll through to make sure everything looks correct. You should have four pages just like these. And now our last important step here in the construction of these documents is to save this file as and notice how the file name is selected. You can just begin typing correspondence 11295. Do not let it fill in the main document name there. The .docx will be filled in automatically so click Save. Then we're going to close and submit this to GDP for scoring. You can close your main document. You can save it. Now we click Browse. Remember we're looking for this last named merged file, Correspondence 11295. That's what we're uploading. Submit work. And we should have zero errors. If you make a mistake in your main document, in the body of the letter, it's going to be repeated. One error will be repeated four times in the merged document. So you might have four errors come up and it's only one that you made in the original document. Technically, it would be easiest to go back and correct that one error in your main document and merge again. But you can make the corrections in your merged document if you wish. If the errors show up in your fields, your placeholder field information, you're going to go back to your data source file to correct those or correct them in your merged document. OK? You should have completed your first successful merge and be prepared for the remaining business letter merged projects. However, remember that one of them is a modified block style letter, so you need to review that formatting in order to complete that one successfully. Otherwise, we'll be moving on to Lesson 115 with envelopes, mailing labels, and our final business letter merge.